Leçon 6. L'impératif. L'impératif. On utilise l'impératif pour donner un ordre, une instruction ou un conseil. L'impératif n'utilise que trois sujets, tout, nous et vous. Ils sont conjugués au présent. Imperatives are used to give orders, instructions, and counsels. Imperatives only use three subjects. Tu, nous, and vous. Also keep in mind that it is only written in present tense. L'impératif pour le verbe parler. Pal, sans s. Ballon, palais. Pour le verbe prendre, prend avec s. Prenons, prenez. So these are the two verbs, palais et prendre, in the imperative form. Ouvra, est, ayons, ayez. Être, soit, soyons. Soyez, allez, va, allons, allez, sauvera, sache, sachons, sachez. The verbs mentioned before was avoir, être, aller, sauvera in their imperative form. You can also use imperatives with pronom complément. Uh, par exemple, vas-y, apportez-la, téléphone-moi, demande-lui, couche-toi. Another thing to note about imperatives is that if the pronoun that follows the imperative is a vowel, then you have to add an S. For a perfect example is what I said before, vas-y. Usually you don't have an S, but it's there because of Y. Les pronoms toniques. On utilise les pronoms toniques après c'est ou ce sont, après une préposition, par exemple avec et cher, etc. Après l'impératif, euh, mais seulement moi et toi. Aussi après un nom. Par exemple, Marie et moi. Disjunctive pronouns are moi, toi, lui, elle, nous, vous, eux, elle. They are used after c'est or ce sont, after a preposition, after imperatives, but only Moi and toi are used after imperatives and after a noun. Another important thing to note about disjunctive pronouns is that they can be used by themselves to emphasize certain elements in a sentence. However, you cannot use it to start a sentence. For example, if I'm with a group of my friends and we're discussing chocolate, and I'm the only one that likes chocolate, to emphasize my opinion, I could be like, moi, j'adore la chocolat. To just for them to know that even though everybody else dislikes it, me, I love chocolate. Another perfect example of how to use disjunctive pronouns is let's say that a professor is doing a roll call and a student, two students in the class have the same name as you. So to specify whether the professor is actually calling you, you can say moi or if you think it's another student, you can say lui or elle. So keep in mind that disjunctive pronouns can be used for numerous cases. 
les groupes de verbes. Il y a trois groupes de verbes. Le premier groupe se termine par er, er. Par exemple, aimer. Le deuxième groupe se termine par ir. Par exemple, finir. Le troisième groupe se termine par erreur. Par exemple, prendre. There are three groups of verbs in French that you need to memorize. The first group we've gone over numerous times. They end in er. They are called er verbs. A perfect example is aimer. The second group ends with ir. A perfect example is finir. And the third group ends with re. Perfect example, prendre. Now, it's very important that you know how to conjugate each verb in each group because there are numerous verbs out there that are conjugated the same way. For the first group, you'll see a lot of er verbs such as aimer and parler, and they are usually conjugated the same way. Of course, they are exceptions. For the second group with fini, you have grandir. There are numerous verbs out there with ir ending that are conjugated the same way. For prendre, you have apprendre. Also, numerous verbs out there that are conjugated the same way. And once you know how to conjugate each verb from each group, you know how to conjugate majority of the verbs. Always keep in mind that there will always be exceptions to these groups. Par exemple, être ends with re, but is a regular verb, so it's not conjugated the same way. If you have any questions about this week's lesson, leave it in the comment box down below.